Good evening. You're watching News Channel 6 at 7. I'm Mary Calkins. They tell me they are excited and they're planning on a big win tonight. Here at the Augusta National, all 72 golfers get to play in the practice round, not just those who made the top 30 spot. They will go toward making healthy food more accessible for everyone, especially people here in the Harrisburg community. Empty classrooms and empty hallways here at Tolliver County Schools. The parking pits here downtown are no longer safe and up to standard. That is arraignment today. Commissioner Sammy Sias pleaded not guilty to two federal indictments. There are only 1,900 tickets to go around, so some friends and families will not be able to attend tonight as they cheer for Tiger Woods, and he will tee off shortly at 141. An Augusta commissioner is looking to end the city's mask mandate. With cases of COVID rising across much of the country, the Biden administration is already looking ahead. The last time a regular season was halted due to a collective bargaining agreement was back in 1995. As you can see behind me, half of the mall has already been demolished. I'm excited about that. And you know what? Today is May 5th and we yeah. all know what that means. It is Cinco de Mayo. And if the rain stays away, that first pitch is at 7.05 p.m. Her all-time favorite winner of the green jacket is Arnold Palmer. She says his kindness toward her and other patrons made a lasting impression. 60 to 70,000 cars cross this bridge here at the I-20 state line every single day. And all around me and right behind me, you can see the remains of one of his tires. And one of those bullets actually traveled all the way across this street into the BP parking lot. Jurors considering the case of three men accused of killing Ahmaud Arbery reaching a verdict this afternoon. Georgia and South Carolina are part of a multi-state lawsuit. It happens through a screen like this, and sometimes it happens in chat rooms, but lately it's apps like Snapchat, Instagram, and TikTok. These plans are about 50% done, but they have to be finalized by the end of the year. Unfortunately for the scammers to line up to take your money. And that's our report for now. Thanks for watching and be sure to download our mobile app. You pedal illicit narcotics in our community and a death results if we can develop appropriate facts we will pursue you and charge you with murder the csra is seeing an increase in people dying from drug overdoses many of those deaths are due to fentanyl which is 100 times more potent than morphine and deadly even in small doses and now the columbia county district attorney says his office is cracking down on dealers with a persistent, steadily increasing, relentless surge of prosecutions, your district attorney's office in Columbia County will back the blue and, God willing, prevent more parents from receiving such tragic news. Monday, the Columbia County DA's office indicted Colin McGill on charges of felony murder and a man's death, which allegedly resulted from distribution of fentanyl. And that's one family potentially receiving justice. But there are so many others, like the family of Chase Wheelis. Chase had gotten sober from pills after spending six months in a rehab facility. I told them all that they gave me my son back. I had Chase for that six months. We could go see him on Sundays and he would come home. We had our Chase back and, and it was the best. After those six months, Chase went to a sober living facility in Florida. There his roommate had relapsed and offered him pills. And he wasn't there eight days and it was an overdose of fentanyl. He had like 16 times what it would kill you. Cynthia Wheelis says she will remember her son as a bright light, and she says she's glad Columbia County is sending a message. Drug dealers stay away from these young kids. You know, it makes you feel uneasy to know that someone is out there that could potentially do harm to people for no particular reason. For my family, say, I don't want to leave them at home and then some, you know, him come to my house just so happened, you know, and then I'm not there to defend my family or, you know, make sure everything's okay. It was shock. It was, I had no idea. Some Edgefield County residents say they feel left in the dark by the sheriff's office about what's going on in their town when the police, canine, and helicopter presence is hard to miss. If you have that many different agencies coming to look for somebody, it has to be something significant. I mean, they're telling nobody anything. It's nothing. Trayvonta Langford is wanted by the Edgefield County Sheriff's Office for three felonies, kidnapping, criminal sexual misconduct, and domestic violence of high and aggravated nature. He is currently out on bond from another case where he was charged with homicide by child abuse. He is awaiting trial on that charge. I know we've been a little close to the chest on a lot of this information. It is extremely sensitive. It is all domestic related, 
all domestic related. So we are protecting the victim here. We are protecting their identity. Reports show Langford threatened and assaulted a significant other on several occasions. He also threatened the victim's family, including threatening to shoot up the victim's mother's house. Uh, they have been threatened. They have been terrorized by Langford. When officers attempted to arrest him for the three felonies after 2 a.m. Sunday, he jumped out of his car and fled, initiating the manhunt. The sheriff says they believe Langford is hiding in the heavily wooded area between Sweetwater Road and Highway 23. We have kept uh, a patrol from Sweetwater, Cantaloupe, Bosket, Gray Street, Gray Street Extension, Highland Avenue, and Highway 23 uh, throughout the night. And we're continuing that as we speak. We will not stop. Residents have actually encountered Langford during the search, and they say he's extremely worn out. Remember, we're more than 60 hours into this search, and it's cold out here. He may not have had access to food and water, and the sheriff said he's actually hoping these conditions will force Langford to kind of give up, to turn himself over to authorities. The sheriff shared with us a few moments ago that as of 5 o'clock, they're going to tone back the amount of manpower on this case. There will absolutely still be boots on the ground, just not as many as there were in the initial hours of the search. Search. And of course, if you see Langford, do not approach him, but call 911. Reporting live in Edgefield County, Mary Calkins.